Now, why is it important to demonstrate this support for Israel? Because we must show Israel support in more than just words. It sends a message to the world that the most powerful country on the planet supports this tiny little country in the Middle East because speaking so would also send a strong deterrent message to the new axis of evil forming in the Eastern Hemisphere. You know who I'm talking about. The growing, festering alliance between Russia, China, and Iran, to name a few. Russia has, in the last couple weeks, while it, it is fighting to annex Ukraine, hosted a delegation from Hamas in Moscow. Putin offered no sympathy for Israel, and it's because of Russia's alliance with Iran. Now, in his first comments, instead of empathy, Putin blasting the U.S. This is a clear example of the failure of the United States policy in the Middle East, which tried to monopolize any settlement between Israelis and Palestinians. Kremlin-controlled TV following suit, mocking both America and Israel for allegedly being caught off guard by Hamas's attack. Mossad and its famous counterintelligence, as well as the U.S. and its CIA, slept through Hamas's invasion. It's the biggest Israeli failure in security since 1973. Russia has long been allied with Israel's staunchest adversaries and Hamas's most important backers, bombing Syrian rebels in support of pro-Iranian fighters battling on the side of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad during Syria's civil war. But Russia also maintained strong ties and security arrangements with Israel. Putin meeting Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on many occasions. We in no way uh, underestimate the importance uh, of uh, measures that would ensure uh, very strong security of the state of Israel. But since Putin launched his full-scale war against Ukraine, Tehran has become a key ally for Moscow at Israel's expense, fostering economic and military ties with Iran, while Tehran provides the Russian army with scores of Shahed drones the Russians use to hit Ukrainian cities and infrastructure, Kiev says, even though Tehran denies it. Last week, Russia's representative to the United Nations claimed that Israel does not have the right to defend itself, citing a United Nations ruling from 2004. This is from Article 51 of the UN Charter saying that Israel could not invoke self-defense against an occupied territory which Israel controls. But Newsmax points out Israel ceded control of the Gaza Strip in 2005, and it is governed by the Hamas terrorist organization, which has sworn to destroy Israel. Now, we're talking about deterring this new axis of evil. This is what else happened at the United Nations this week. Russia and China vetoed, Russia and China vetoed a U.S.-sponsored U.N. Security Council resolution condemning Hamas and calling for humanitarian pauses in the fighting between Israel and the Palestinian terrorist group in Gaza. A Russian resolution was also rejected that denounced Hamas, but also condemned indiscriminate attacks on civilians in Gaza and called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. So you can clearly see this forming alliance between Russia, China, and Iran against America and its allies like Israel, and in more things than, than just this, but um, we have to send a very strong message, although in a much different form than what Biden has disastrously done with Ukraine. Now, one thing that's interesting in Russia's and Putin's statements, it's the exact same thing that liberals are saying in the U.S., but one year ago, the liberals would talk about what a monster Putin is, and yet now they're saying the same thing. They're on the same page. So what does it tell you, libs, radical progressives, that you and the monstrous, savage, blood-sucking Putin are preaching the same message when it comes to Israel? 
Getting quality, good priced meat products is proving to be increasingly difficult these days. With Biden inflation, the prices of everything in the store is going through the roof. When you make fuel more expensive, that costs the farmer more, it costs the shipper more, it costs the grocer more, and it costs you more. That's why you need to check out Good Ranchers. They'll ship directly to your house their 100% American beef, chicken, seafood, and pork, all, all sourced from independent farmers in the U.S. So check the link in my show notes and use the code RANCHER10, RANCHER10, for 10% off their best-selling Rancher's Classic Box.